Spiritual Teaching 248 Love Each Other 1. My peace be in every spirit. Feel deeply this peace, so that the light that reveals the true paths may turn you away from the dark paths that for centuries you have traveled, stumbling. How much sadness you have covered the beautiful planet that I entrusted to you so that you could dwell for a lesson towards your eternal life. 2. Only with peace in your spirit will you be able to follow me and understand me. This lesson that I give you is for strong spirits, for temperate men in pain and in love, so that these later shine before humanity as examples. 3. If you think about the example of Jesus, you will benefit more from my lessons. But if you persist in eating the bitter fruits that humanity cultivates, you will understand little or nothing of my doctrine. There are many dangerous fruits, so treacherous, because they offer sweetness on the outside and hide the poison inside. 4. I tell you again, calm your spirit, momentarily forgetting your problems, thinking of all humanity, since the world lives a time of restitution. 5. You are like bushes, which sometimes have branches so dry and diseased that they need the painful cut of the pruned to ward off your ills and make you regain health. The doctor, when pulling from the human tree the diseased branches that eat away a member of his body, groans, trembles, and cowers, even knowing that it is to remove from him what is sick, what is dead and threatens what can still live. Rose bushes also, when they suffer the pruning cut, pour their sap as tears of pain, but later, they will be covered with more beautiful flowers. My justice, my love, in an infinitely superior way, cuts the evil in the hearts of my children, sometimes sacrificing myself in them. When men crucified me, I covered my executioners with my sweetness and my forgiveness and gave them life. In my words and in my silences I filled them with light, I defended them and I saved them. So I cut the evil, stopping it with my love and defending and saving the wrongdoer. Those pardons were, are still, and will be eternally a picture of redemption. 6. Today as yesterday, I come to lift you up in your falls, to interpose myself in your loss. See how you have nothing to fear from me. Fear from yourselves. 7. I always show my children the easy, beautiful, and safe way. I avoid long, heavy, and bitter walks that you create with your works. If you get lost or you are lazy and you delay your arrival on the path of light, it is because you are obstinate in it. 8. I give you new revelations so that you also achieve new transformations. Nothing and no one can oppose my lessons in the form of writings, reaching the spirits. My word will destroy all falsehood that has accumulated in human life. 9. I do not come to provoke a slight conflict, but a great war of ideas, in which the inspired will shine. I will inspire the word to you so that you analyze my teaching. 10. Come to the Master and learn from Him, so that you destroy the misinterpretations about the scriptures that in times past have been taught those erroneous interpretations that have been like thick veils, that do not let the truth be seen. 11. They have spoken to you of the Antichrist, to whom my disciple John refers in Revelation, and in your confusion, you have attributed that personality to many of your brothers, both past and present. I tell you that this Antichrist, as humanity has conceived him, has neither existed nor will exist. Antichrist is everyone who does not love, because Christ is the love of the Creator. See then how your world is full of antichrists blinded by materialism. 12. I also tell you that you be not full of uncertainties and denials, full of false statements or lies that you pass for truths. Thank goodness the sincere denial that is born of doubt or ignorance does for you, that hypocritical assertion of a falsehood. It is better to have a clear doubt, which is hungry for understanding, than to believe of any myth. It is better the desperate uncertainty, crying out for the light, than the firmness fanatic or idolater. Today the unbelievers, the distrustful and the bitter abound everywhere. They are rebels that many times they see clearer than others, that they do not feel the ritualism, nor are they convinced by the statements they have heard of those who lead men spiritually, because all those complicated theories don't fill his heart thirsty for pure waters to calm their anguish. Those who you consider rebellious, many times have more light in their questions than those who, 
believing themselves wise or large, answer them. They feel, see, touch, hear, and understand more clearly than many who say they are. Teachers in Divine Lessons 13. And so you dispute about the dreaded and terrible end of the world that you supposed at the door of each of your wars. I also tell you now that the end you are waiting for will not come. My words of the second time they referred to a materialized and scientific world that does not honor me, love me, or recognize me. 14. You have believed to the letter in the coming of men who will call themselves Christs, and you have ended up believing that those are the false Christs. 15. You persist in wanting to understand the backward symbols or you become attached to them in such a way that you get confused and finally you don't know what to think. Stop thinking so much. Purify your spirit and your heart and come to me. I will give you the light and I will reveal to you what you should know, both for your material improvement and for your spiritual ascension. 16. Who are the false Christs? All those who proclaim superiority and virtue and claiming to be diffusers of good do the opposite. 17. You still speak of the terrible justice of God, of the wrath of Jehovah, of the eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, of the day of the judgment in which I will be the avenging judge. And how many days of judgment have you had during your existence? But in those sad moments for your spirit, I have not been your judge, but your defender. Anger cannot exist in my spirit, so how can I manifest it? In me there is only harmony. Those who say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, it's you. My justice is loving and it is you who ask for the opportunity to purify yourselves, because I do not punish you. 18. To those of you who are walking on lost paths, I am ready to receive you and give you my strength and my light when you call me. It does not matter that in your flesh and in your spirit you bring the footprint of great sinners. I will make you bless those who have wronged you and that you bless God for having seen possible in you that wonder. Then you will be beginning to feel the love of Christ in your heart. Some will think when they hear these words, How is it possible that great sinners can receive this grace just like the just who possess it by merit? Oh, humanity, you do not see beyond your eyes. I have always given you my benefits by grace before you become worthy. 19. I respond the same to a pure thought, as to the sad lament of those who approach me stained, provided that even a small flash of humility or appreciation sprouts from him, for his lack of love for your brothers. 20. I am the defender of the weak who cry in the midst of their impotence and ignorance. I am the divine hope that calls and consoles the one who cries. I am the sweet Christ who gently caresses the one who groans in his pain and in his restitution. 21. I am the Savior, your Redeemer. I am the truth within the reach of man. 22. Here is one more of my disciples' lessons. Truly I tell you that when you think you are strong, big, or exalted, you are far from me because your pride drowns the feeling of humility. But when you consider yourselves little ones, when you recognize that you are like atoms in the midst of my creation, then you come closer to me because through your humility you admire me, love me, and feel me close. It is when you think of everything big and mysterious that God contains and that you would like to know, and you seem to hear the echo of the divine murmur in your spirit. 23. I am the master of your spirit and its savior. The matter in you is one of many instruments that have been given to you. But most, when they incarnate, they tend to forget me and get lost influenced by the life that surrounds them on earth, when the spirit of true greatness and elevation is still lacking. Others, without forgetting that I am their Lord and Father, are insatiable in asking, but greedy when it comes to giving, they lack greatness of spirit to know how to love. They think they know how to ask, but they don't know how to give. They don't care about learning to ask and less in learning to give. The only thing you must ask me is that I do my will in you, because you have already recognized that my will is just perfect and loving. 24. I have told you, ask that it will be given to you. 25. Do you consider that phrase or that request insignificant? Truly I tell you that whoever elevates her to me, feeling her, he will have found a source of wonders. As for giving, give everything that love advises you. 26. You try in the world to numb the purest feelings of the spirit with vain sensations. 
more like the Divine Spirit is latent in your being, all of you will have to surrender to Him, some first, others later. 27. Men will not be able to fight eternally against God, against the only one that can elevate you from your condition of imperfect beings to the heights of the perfect. 28. I taught you with my doctrine the true meaning of life and to interpret with justice not only my word of this time, but also that of the past time, because with your wrong interpretations, you have created around my words, fanatic practices, that is why your materialism does not let you understand, when I told you, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. You think, is it possible that the heavens also pass like the earth? Behold your lack of penetration, I who loved you say in it, that this sky that you look at, and this earth in which you live would pass away, since time marks its trace second by second, but that the essence and substance of my word would not pass, because it is eternal to be divine, and the divine is immutable. Your earth and your sky are transformed and pass insensibly for men, while my love remains unchanged, my love does not pass, because the universe is full of it. 29. Christ came to teach you love, not to satisfy your vain curiosities, but how few know how to love in his name. Whenever you do good, you say, I am noble, I'm generous, I'm charitable, that's why I do this. I tell you, if you did these works in my name, you would be humble, because goodness is from God and I have given it to your spirit. Then who attributes to his human heart his good works? He is denying his spirit and who clothed him with those virtues. But when you do wrong, you wash your hands like Pilate, and you attribute that fact to the Father saying, it was the will of God, it was written, God wanted it, it is destiny. 30. You say that nothing happens without the will of God to apologize for your mistakes, but in truth I tell you that you are wrong because yes your mistakes, your little things pass without the will of God. See how the Almighty never imposes himself on you by force by his power, you do that with your weaker brothers. Truly I tell you, the evil, the impurity, the lack of harmony are yours. Love, patience, serenity are from God. When you love, it is the creator of your spirit who is inspiring you, whereas when you hate, it is you, it is your weakness that drives you and loses you. 31. Whenever something bad happens in your life, be sure that it is your doing, but then you ask, why does God allow it? That he will not suffer for our sins. Won't you cry when you see us cry? Would it be difficult for you to avoid these falls? And I tell you, as long as you do not love, God will be something for you that you cannot understand, because the magnanimity of your Creator is above your understanding. 32. Become strong, great, wise, learn to love. When you love, you will not have the childish tendency to want to analyze God, because then you will look at Him and feel Him and that will be enough for you. 33. My love comes to answer you those questions that you sometimes ask yourself in your pain. I only allow you get to know the taste of the fruit you have grown, so that you feel something of what you have made to feel. I also tell you that when you fill your chalice while it is within my reach to avoid the pain, I let him instill death in you because your spirit is higher than all those little sensations that through matter they know. 34. This is why Jesus came among men, to teach you how a high spirit should receive the lashes, injuries, and thorns, so that if they crucify you, you will have the courage to be in front of the executioner or in front of the slanderer, loving him and blessing him. 35. This is how you should leave the world and the body. 36. But today I welcome you in this dawn of grace, in which my word returns to you through human understanding. 37. You are preparing humanity to commemorate the birth of Jesus. 38. Christmas party of joy and evocation. 39. For the rich and powerful, it means worldly satisfactions and pleasures. For those who are an imitation of Jesus, who had neither a bed nor a home the night he was born, it is a feast of deprivation, but with spiritual joy. 40. Christian humanity who are preparing to decorate your altars and prepare your feasts. Truly I say that your heart is empty. Have you not meditated that those altars that you erect and those images with which you represent me, they are only a recreation for your eyes and an imitation of the divine, which is very far from reality. I have always come to live in the temple of true humility, 
so I have taught you to fulfill your mission with all love and self-denial. 41. Today I contemplate that that teaching has been distorted, that its essence has been forgotten by this Christendom. For those who destroy homes call themselves Christians, those who display greatness and power and those who promote wars also call themselves Christians. But not everyone will follow that example and that path, because many will awaken, recognizing that the greatness of the spirit is in the essence of the heart, where the pure feelings that God inspires in man nest. 42. About 2,000 years ago I came into the world as a man. If I remind you, it is so that you can see how far you are from fulfilling my teaching. My perfect example began from the moment of my birth, continued throughout my childhood and my youth, until the last breath on the cross of martyrdom. That story, written in my blood, is the book of life and the principle of human. Redemption. 43. I came to dwell among men to make them understand that the Father's love for them is so great that I came to limit myself to live humanly with you. Far from all this, from the concept that of the divinity they had the princes who exercised the law that Moses left them. How could they conceive the Son of God in poverty since they lived in opulence? How were they to bow down to Jesus, the carpenter's son, if they feel privileged? My doctrine of love and meekness was not understood by them. My crib was so humble that of those no one approached, not even to give me a caress or a look. But nature was moved by my presence as a man, and he in his different kingdoms opened his womb to welcome me, while the light of the Eternal, symbolized by a star, announced to the world the arrival of the Messiah. 44. Now, in this time in which I have not had to be born as a human creature, nor become a man to be persecuted, the light of my spirit that descends on you will be contemplated by humanity, which will recognize where my word is spilling. 45. Today I come as light, as essence, to fill with peace men of good will, those who have known to remember with spirituality and joy this day, and to those who have offered me as a tribute, their heart. 46. Sufferings and humility is what you offer me, remembering that your master thus came to the world to suffer. 47. I receive this offering and light an inextinguishable flame in your heart. If I offered myself in sacrifice to teach you the way of your redemption, do not forget that I am always ready to extend my charity to save you. 48. Your spiritual childhood passed and you must understand your evolution. 49. I have given you my representation because I have told you, he who fulfills as a disciple will be similar to his teacher. Sow love, put peace in hearts, do miracles. Resurrect to the life of grace, the dead to truth. 50. Spiritualist, be the interpreter and emissary of my word. On this day I caress all the men who remember my coming, according to my teaching that you have received. 51. As my divine ray ascends from the spokesperson, my inspiration will descend upon you so that you understand my word. I want to see you united in one desire, peace among humanity. 52. Blessed is he who comes after me, because he will have the light of my divine spirit. The one who seeks me it is because he has felt within himself that the moment of his evolution has come. 53. The human mind tries to break the chains of slavery that have bound it. I have told you that this is the time when mind and spirit must seek their freedom because before them lies an infinite field where you can know and achieve more than your heart has shown you. Thus will man be perfected and you will achieve more wisdom, then there will be truth in every human idea. 54. Today I have been speaking to you through multiple spokespersons, leaving through them a book for your spirit, as in the second era I left a legacy of wisdom and love to this humanity. Because the foundations of my doctrine are of love, that universal and superior force that tends to unite all beings in a single family. 55. This divine quality you must possess, because there can be no charity where there is no love. But I have filled you with love so that whenever the opportunity arises to practice charity, do so, knowing that it is not limited or subject to a certain form. To develop those faculties, I have given you a part of myself, the one that has lived in you, it is your spirit enlightened by the consciousness who makes you understand that you proceed from my spirit. 56. 
In this way you can understand that the divine force manifests itself in all that is life, because life is all that surrounds you. I have taught you not to limit your God in one way. I can have all the forms or not have none because I am the Creator. 57. When your intelligence takes you to the beginning of life and you discover there how things are born and creatures transformed, you will marvel to understand the explanation of many of my lessons. There you will discover that God is manifested in everything, from beings imperceptible to your gaze to the worlds and major stars. 58. In this way you will understand that man is not a creator of life or elements, that he only uses and transforms what has already been created, for that I have put man in the middle of creation and to develop all the gifts and powers with which I have clothed him. 59. Creation is God himself and the time will come when men who are unaware of the relationship that exists between the Creator and man, understand that everything that man does, he takes from the divine power. 60. Man has a development like everything that forms creation. He was small at first. His intelligence was in accordance with the primitive life he led. But God made him develop by himself, that he know what is good and evil so that he would discover in itself his spiritual part and his material part, because at first he did not know his spirit. Thus man developed, knowing where he comes from and where he is going, recognizing his powers that they must lead to perfection. Thus it has come to this time when I have revealed to him that for him perfecting the spirit is not quite an existence. 61. Of this you can have clear proof, when verifying that the experience of man today is greater than of the men of long ago because it is the spirit that brings with it the light collected in the paths of previous lives. And you have called this time the century of light, for the advances of human science, and it is that the divine light has shone in all understanding. 62. I, the Father, am the one who speaks to you. For those who doubt, I make my word clear and precise. She manifests according to the capacity of the spokesperson, his brain receives the transmission of my wisdom and expresses it according to its scope, but the essence is the same in all interpreters. 63. I welcome you all and I bless you. 64. Here is the perfect judge among you, the one who knocks at the doors of your sensitivity to make you understand the little importance that your thoughts, words and deeds may have before his omnipotence, justice and wisdom. Your spirit has managed to evolve in such a way that your consciousness not only judges the faults of your present existence, but also reveals ancient debts owed to my divine justice. 65. When your senses have reached a greater spirituality, the memory of your past and the intuition will be clearer in you. Now it is only a vague feeling that you have about all this, but that nevertheless helps you to carry your cross with resignation and conformity with the certainty that in this way your spirit is cleansed and saved. 66. Those who yesterday made fun of Jesus by looking at him panting with the cross on the shoulders are those who now have meekly taken his cross to raise the slope. Those who at that time cried out, crucify him, have now consecrated themselves to serving me and love me. 67. Those screams pierced my heart, those hatreds and blasphemies hurt me, but I did not kill them, I forgave and gave them new life, because they didn't know what they were doing. 68. Spiritually, I am still nailed to the cross, although materially you have detached my body from the tree. Still my side pours blood and water and all the wounds are fresh, because you still do not love one another, because there are still hatreds and wars. 69. Truly I tell you. Prepare yourselves so that you can clearly hear the voice of consciousness and so that the eyes of your spirit may contemplate the truth of all that I have told you. My peace be with you.